Hi, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Transforming Energy. This is a lab manual in Unit 8. Section 1, Magnetic Forces. Navigating by Earth's magnetic field. Dorothy Kremers is a scientist. She and a team of scientists were curious if bottlenose dolphins are able to sense magnets. Magnets are objects that produce a magnetic field. A magnetic field is the invisible area around a magnet that attracts or repels other magnets and magnet materials such as iron. Earth, a giant magnet. The reason scientists care about animals' abilities to sense magnetic fields is that Earth itself is a giant magnet. It has a magnetic field that is created in Earth's liquid iron core and extends far into space. Scientists believe animals such as dolphins, sea turtles, bats, spiny lobsters, and many insects navigate from place to place using Earth's magnetic field. Understanding how Earth's magnetic field could help animals navigate begins with the basic rules of magnetism. Magnets exert a force on other magnets or magnetic materials. A force is a push or pull that acts on an object, changing its speed, direction, or shape. Magnets either repel or attract other magnets or magnetic materials. To repel means to push away. To attract means to pull toward. All magnets, including Earth itself, have a North Pole and a South Pole. Earth's magnetic North Pole is actually near the South Pole, while its magnetic South Pole is near the North Pole. The North Pole of one magnet always attracts the South Pole of another. However, two North Poles will always repel each other. Two South Poles will also repel each other. Magnetic Fields One hypothesis about how animals navigate using Earth's magnetic field is that they have tiny magnetic particles in their cells that react with Earth's magnetic field, somehow signaling the nervous system in a way that guides the animals as they travel around the planet. However, scientists cannot say for sure how animals use Earth's magnetic field. The scientists who studied dolphins focused on one part of this question. Can dolphins sense magnets? dolphins sense magnets. Dorothy and her team set up an experiment with six dolphins. They set up two different kinds of barrels. One kind of barrel was made of a magnetic material. The other kind of barrel had an identical shape and density, but it was demagnetized. The scientists then videoed how the dolphins interacted with the different barrels. Their experiment showed that the dolphins swam towards the magnetized block much faster than they swam towards the demagnetized block. The scientists still don't know exactly how animals can sense magnetic fields, but they believe that animals in the ocean may benefit from having a magnetic sense that detects Earth's magnetic field. This is because the ocean is vast with few landmarks that animals can use to mark their path. Inside the ocean, the magnetic field would be a very good cue to navigate, Dorothy said in a 2014 interview with Live Science. The experiment didn't tell scientists that dolphins could sense Earth's magnetic field. This is because the magnets used by the scientists had a much stronger magnetic field than Earth's own magnetic field. More research needs to be done to explore whether dolphins can sense Earth's weaker magnetic field and if this is how dolphins navigate. How people use magnets. People can also use Earth's magnet, magnetic field to navigate with the help of a compass. A compass is an instrument that aligns with Earth's magnetic poles. The red tip of the compass needle is a magnetic North Pole. Because North Poles are attracted to South Poles, the red tip always points towards Earth's internal magnetic South Pole, near the geographic North Pole. Why magnets are useful. In addition to compasses, there are many other ways that magnets are used in everyday life. Vacuum cleaners and music speakers use magnets to do work. Strong magnets on cranes can be used to pick up and move objects made of iron, such as junkyard cars. 
One of the reasons that magnets are so useful is that they can attract or repel other magnets or magnetic materials without touching them. Whenever a magnet or a magnetic material is within another magnet's magnetic field, the field exerts a force that either attracts or repels the magnet or magnetic material. Imagine you have two magnets. When they are within each other's magnetic fields, they form a system because they interact with one another by exerting a force on each other. For example, if you orient the magnets so that their like poles face one another, they will repel each other. Relationship between two forces. Now imagine that you push those repelling magnets towards each other. You have to use energy to move them together. As you push the repelling magnets together, you apply a force to the system that transfers the energy from your hands into the system. In other words, your pushing force provides an input of kinetic energy into the system. That input of kinetic energy is stored in the system as potential energy. You can see evidence of this potential energy when you let go of the two repelling magnets. They will move apart from one another. The potential energy stored in the system has been changed back into kinetic energy. If you change the distance between the interacting magnets, you change how much energy is transferred into the system. For example, the closer you push two repelling magnets together, the more energy you need to use. This means more energy is transferred into and stored within the system. This will cause the magnets to move farther apart when you release them. Conservation of energy. In a perfect system, the total amount of energy is always conserved as it changes from one form to another. In other words, however much potential energy the system of interacting magnets has, the same amount of energy will change into kinetic energy as the magnets are released and moved away from one another. However, in the real world, some of that energy is transferred out of the system. When energy is transferred, it moves into or out of an object or system. For example, if the magnets move across the ground, friction will transfer some of the energy out of the system. Friction is a force that slows motion whenever two objects rub against each other by causing some of the energy of the moving objects to change into heat. Earth's magnetic field. Earth is a magnet because of its internal structure. Earth has four layers, an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, and a crust. Earth's outer core is magnetic because it is made up of a liquid iron and nickel metal. Earth's magnetic field extends far out into space. It protects the planet from solar winds released by the sun. It isn't very strong. It is weaker than a typical fridge magnet. Because Earth is a magnet, it has a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole. However, these poles are opposite the geographic north and south poles, which are the northernmost and southernmost fixed points on Earth. Earth's magnetic north, which is near the geographic north pole, is actually a magnetic south pole. This is why the north pole of a compass is attracted to it. Earth's magnetic south, which is near the geographic south pole, is actually a magnetic north pole. Further complicating matters is the fact that the magnetic poles move every year. The reason this happens goes back to the materials that make up Earth's interior. Earth's liquid outer core is in constant motion as the liquid iron and nickel swirl around. As it moves, Earth's magnetic field changes. Section two, magnets and electricity, trains that float on air. The world's fastest train is in Shanghai, a city in China. This train is called the Shanghai Maglev. It reaches speeds of 431 kilometers per hour or 268 miles per hour. It can travel 30 kilometers or 18.6 miles in seven minutes and 20 seconds. The Shanghai Maglev is able to reach such speeds because it uses giant magnets to float over the tracks. Maglev is short for magnetic levitation. Floating above the tracks offers the trains a significant advantage. There is very little friction to slow the trains down. Engineers in the United States are discussing using maglev trains to connect the east and west coasts. 
Maglev trains work because they use a kind of magnetic, a magnet called an electromagnet. Electromagnets are tightly wound coils of wire that produce a magnetic field when electricity passes through the wire. They are useful in various technologies because the magnet can be turned off and on. This is different from permanent magnets, which stay magnetized without electricity. Electromagnets use electricity. Electromagnets become magnetized when electricity moves through the wire. Electricity is the flow of electrons through a conductor. Electricity is all around us. It is found in our bodies as electrical impulses and in the sky during storms as lightning. It also powers much of our modern world, turning on lights and powering motors, cell phones, and many other technology. <clears throat> electricity happens because of the structure of matter. Remember that all matter is made of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are made up of even smaller particles, including protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus, and electrons orbit the nucleus at different distances called shells. Protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative charge. Interaction of charged particles. Charged particles change the space around them. They produce an electric field that can exert a force on other charged particles within the field. Similar to magnets, charged particles either attract or repel one another. Particles that have an opposite charge attract one another within their electric field, while particles with the same charge repel one another within their electric field. Electrons are kept in orbit in their shells because the positive charges of the protons in the nucleus attract the negatively charged electrons. The strength of the field weakens with distance. Because of this, electrons in shells closest to the nucleus are tightly bound. Electrons in the outermost shell are much more loosely bound. When a force is applied, electrons in the outer shells can be pushed from one atom to another. Once the first electron has been pushed away from its atom, it moves to another atom. This movement of electrons causes electrons to all move in the same direction as one another. It is the movement of these electrons that creates electricity. Moving electrons. Electrons can move more easily through some materials than others. Electric conductors are materials that allow electrons to pass through them easily. Metals such as copper and aluminum are electric conductors because they have electrons that are loosely held and therefore can easily be pushed from their shells by an outside force. Electric insulators are materials that do not allow electrons to pass through easily because electrons do not easily separate from their atoms. Rubber and plastic are both good electric insulators. This is why electrical cords are covered in rubber or plastic. The electricity cannot travel through the rubber or plastic and is forced to follow the path on the aluminum or copper wires. Some materials are semiconductors, which means they can sometimes act as a conductor depending on what other molecules are around. Electromagnets are part of a circuit. Because electromagnets are made with electricity, they can be demagnetized when the electricity is turned off. This is possible because electromagnets form a circuit. A circuit is the circular path that electrons travel in a negative to positive direction. All circuits have the same basic parts. All circuits have an energy source, such as a battery. The battery has stored chemical energy that converts to electrical energy, which is the energy of electrically charged particles. The battery's energy provides the input of force that pushes the electrons in the conductive material through the circuit. All batteries have a positive side and a negative side. Electrons travel from the negative end of the battery through the circuit to the positive end because the negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positive side of the battery. A battery's voltage affects how much it can push and pull electrons through a circuit. Voltage is a measure of the difference in electric charge between two points. A high voltage pushes and pulls electrons with more force than a low voltage. Voltage is measured in volts. Circuits, circuits also have wires. Wires are the paths that electrons travel in the circuit. Energy moves from the battery through the conductors inside the wires. The wires in a circuit are attached to an object that can convert electrical energy to do work. Work is any change in position, speed, or state of matter due to force. 
all circuits must include something that can do work. Without this part, the electricity will cause danger by overheating the circuit. This is called a short circuit. For example, a light bulb is an object that does work. When electrons reach the light bulb in a circuit, they transfer electrical energy. The light bulb changes the electrical energy into outputs of light energy and heat. In a perfect system, the same amount of energy that was transferred through the circuit would be available to light up the bulb because of the conservation of energy. However, in the real world, some of the energy transfers out of the system due to resistance, which is the force opposing the current. The electrons then continue on their path. They return to the opposite side of the battery. Finally, most circuits have switches. The switch opens and closes the circuit. Electrons flow when a circuit is closed. This is on. A closed circuit will cause the light bulb to light up. Electrons cannot flow when a circuit is open. This is off. No work can be done in an open circuit. Electromagnets in circuits. The way a circuit is put together affects the amount of electric current that can do work. Current is a measure of the rate that electric charge passes through a point in an electric circuit over time. The amount of work that can be done increases as current increases. For example, a fast current will cause a light bulb to be brighter than a slow current. This is because more electrons reach the bulb in the same amount of time. Current is measured in amps. Currents produce magnetic fields. Electric current produces a magnetic field as electrons in a conductor move in the same direction as one another, their movement produces a magnetic field around the wire conductor. The magnetic field around a straight wire is not very strong. However, if the wire is wrapped in a coil, the fields produced in each turn of the coil add up to create a stronger magnetic field. This is the idea behind an electromagnet. A tightly coiled wire produces a magnetic field when electricity passes through the wire. The electromagnet becomes magnetized when the circuit is closed. It becomes demagnetized when the circuit is open. Maglev trains are designed with electromagnets on the bottom that produce a powerful magnetic field. The track, called a guideway, has loops of conductive material such as aluminum. As the train passes over the loops, magnetic repulsion between the electromagnets on the train and the magnetic loops keep the train a certain distance from the guideway. Electromagnets and motors. Electromagnets are not just found at the bottom of high-speed trains. They are an important part of electric motors, which are found in a wide range of household items, including electric screwdrivers, washing machines, automatic can openers, fans, electric toothbrushes, and many toys that move. A motor is a machine that transfers an input of electrical energy into an output of kinetic energy. An electromagnetic motor has two parts, an outside permanent magnet and an inside electromagnet. The electromagnet becomes magnetized when it is connected to an electric current. If the electromagnet is positioned so that its north pole is near the north pole of the permanent magnet, the two magnets will repel each other and be attracted to each other's south pole. These attracting and repelling forces cause the electromagnet to rotate, generating kinetic energy. If a gear is attached to the spinning electromagnet, the gear can be made to do work. Changing speed of motor. There are different ways to change the speed that a motor spins. The more coils an electromagnet has, the stronger its magnetic field will be. Because the electric current is so connected to the magnetic field, this stronger magnetic field causes the current to flow even faster. A faster current means that the electrons are moving faster. That faster movement creates a stronger magnetic field, which then causes the current to move even faster. Section three, engineering wind turbines. Mimicking animals. Many engineers have studied the wings of hummingbirds because of their amazing flight abilities. 
They are the only birds that can fly both forwards and backwards. They can also hover in midair, glide sideways, and even upside down. For example, engineers in North Africa are developing wind turbines that mimic the hummingbird's wings as it hovers. A wind turbine is a device that converts kinetic energy from the wind into electrical power. Wind is moving air molecules. Wind turbines can be as tall as a 20-story building and have blades that are 60 meters or 200 feet long. Other engineers have looked to other animals for inspiration about the shape of their wind turbines. Humpback whales and schools of fish have also inspired different designs from the shape of the blades to their placement on the tower and the relationship of each turbine relative to the other turbine. The search for efficiency. The main reason that engineers are searching for new ways to design wind turbines is to improve their efficiency. In any energy system where energy is being converted from one form to another, not all of the energy is converted from a form that can do work. Some is usually transformed into non-usable forms of energy. A simple example of this is moving a box across the floor. You, the box, and the floor form an energy system. As you push the box, you are providing an input of force that transfers kinetic energy to the box. This kinetic energy is what causes the box to move. However, as the box moves across the floor, the force of friction transfers energy out of the system by causing some of the energy of the moving object to change into heat. The more friction there is, the less efficient your energy system is being uh, is because less kinetic energy is available to do the work of moving the box. Engineers are always looking for ways to design technologies that transform energy as effectively as possible. They want to generate more work while using less energy. This is true for wind turbines, which capture the kinetic energy of the wind. How a wind turbine works. As the wind blows, it pushes on a wind turbine's blades. This pushing force transfers the kinetic energy in the wind to the blades, causing the blades to turn. The blades are connected to a drive shaft, which is a long bar of steel that can rotate. As the wind moves the blades, the blades rotate the drive shaft. The drive shaft is connected to a generator. A generator is a machine that converts an input of kinetic energy into an output of electrical energy. The generator uses the same principles of electromagnetic force as an electric motor, but it works in reverse. A generator uses an input of kinetic energy, such as from the wind, to move a magnet near a wire conductor, which creates a flow of electrons, generating electricity. Types of wind turbines. Engineers experiment with different blade shapes and sizes. There are two basic designs, vertical access wind turbines and horizontal access wind turbines. Horizontal access turbines are much more common because they are generally more efficient at converting the wind's kinetic energy into electricity. They look like massive airplane propellers on a pole. However, horizontal access wind turbines work most efficiently when the wind flows at a right angle to the blades. This means that the main rotating shaft and electrical generator must point into the wind. They are also very tall with long blades. This makes them best suited for open spaces, such as fields that have a lot of wind. The other kind of turbine is called a vertical access wind turbine and, is often, and often looks like a massive egg beater. It is the kind of wind turbine the, the main drive shaft is perpendicular. Sorry, in this kind of wind turbine, the main drive shaft is perpendicular to the ground. The main components are located at the base, making any service and repair much easier. One advantage of the vertical axis wind turbine is that it does not need to be pointed into the wind. It will function similarly regardless of wind direction. This makes it a better option for many urban areas where tall buildings make wind flow more unpredictable. However, this design is less efficient than horizontal axis wind turbines because the blades rotate more slowly.
Well, I learned a lot reading Transforming Energy, and I hope you did too. I'll see you tomorrow with another book. Bye.